Oh, I got a Briggs and Stratton uh, lawnmower. It's called a uh, weed eater. 500 series, 158 cc. Uh, I already cleaned the deck and uh, actually used my bench grinder there to uh, sharpen the blades. But I gotta change this oil. I had it tilted over, so it's gonna be yeah all up in there. I changed oil last year. And it's already black as can be. It can last another couple of years probably, but I did all I did was uh, I tilted it over and drained it from the uh, fill tube here, and you know I just don't get it all out. So flip it over, and you'll notice a drain plug here. And what you want to do is uh, you can actually take the blade off, uh, and uh, it'll be a lot easier to drain it by putting a pan under here and tilting it back but uh, I've already sharpened the blades so I'm gonna go ahead and just drain the oil and put in some uh, Briggs and Stratton SA30 you can go ahead and actually use a 10W30 if you wanted to it don't really matter what you use I just happened to pick this up for about four bucks, five bucks. So, what you want to do is uh, get you a small flathead screwdriver and just clean out all the debris because it's kind of hard to get your ratchet in there to drain it. It looks a little better in there now. And then you get your ratchet. Well, I'm not gonna go in there all the way. I was hoping it would, but step on your mower. And it shouldn't be too hard to get out, but sometimes they they really are a pain in the ass. But uh it's got locked tight on it, so that's about as far as I'm going to turn it out of there. Yeah. And I went ahead and scraped it a little bit here. I already did that before, though. And uh, as you can see, well, I don't know where my scraper went. There. It's already starting to rust out. So, actually, when you get this oil drained, Go ahead and take a uh, a brush, a paintbrush, and go ahead and just brush all this, the whole underside of this deck with the uh, old oil you take out of here. And, uh, yeah, it'll be, it'll keep it from rusting. Well, should anyway. Lock here and set you up. Maybe, hopefully, you can see it. I have no idea if you can see that or not, but uh, I'm just gonna wing it. And you can see it draining all over the uh, blade. <laughs> so probably best to remove the blade before you do this. So it'll be a little bit better. But uh, I'm just gonna let that drain out for a little while. and put the plug back in it and fill her back up.
This motor runs pretty dang good too. And this one. Usually uh, when they start to run bad, all it is is this gasket that goes in between the carburetor and the fuel tank and it has like little uh, kind of like reed valves that let flow to go one way and they also got like a little pump in there too uh, it's like a uh, I don't know really how to explain it but it's just a uh, gasket that has a little bit of a bubble to it that will allow to go back up and down uh, from when the engine makes a compression stroke or exhaust stroke or whatever it'll uh, push air back and forth and make that little pump go back and forth here just you know a little bit to where it'll make the gas flow and if you know that little thing has a hole in it or one of your little reed valves they're not a reed valve they're uh, it's a part of the gasket assembly it's just like a piece of paper pretty much a little piece of paper that either lets gas flow up or if there's a compression stroke or whatever it'll kinda close it to where it won't let gas through again or I'm not sure how it works but you know it's somewhat like that let's see here we done yet and yeah, we're just dripping a little bit that should be plenty alright now we can put our plug back in it flip the switch Now these things don't have to be super tight, but uh, if you want them indented just just a little bit, and that's it. Or you know until they bottom out, and uh, you're good to go. And actually, I'm probably gonna take some oil and go ahead and just coat the whole underside of this with a little bit of oil. You can see how it's rusting really bad. And especially down in there, you can see it's rusted completely through. Well, that's probably like that actually. Yeah, it might be like that. I'm not sure if there's supposed to be a weld there or not. Anyway, just to prevent any more or kind of slow it down a little bit. Go ahead and uh, throw some oil around it. All right. And we got little bit on the stick but most of it's all gone it's probably from hitting the side walls in this tube yeah you can see how half of it's filled and the other half's not so it's completely empty now I'm gonna go get my funnel And open up some of this uh, Briggs and Stratton engine oil. You can get this at Big Lots, probably maybe Dollar General. All you want is a uh, standard weight uh, 30 oil. I'm not sure why they don't put the uh, detergent oil in here. Probably because it doesn't have a filter, and if it uh, cleans the uh, the engine, all that sludge and whatnot that's built up is going to be cleaned, and then it's going to get into the engine and just cause more problems so that's probably why they uh, you're supposed to use standard weight not detergent oil non-detergent now this won't take all this it only usually takes about a quart I'm 
not sure. They go by ounces and liters. Yeah. Oh well. We'll do our best. Go ahead and check it. Wow, it says it's already full already. Huh. How much should I use of that jug? About half, that's probably about right. How many quarts does it say? Huh. 48 ounces. Yeah, I don't know. They should put quarts on there instead of ounces and whatnot. Because usually they only take about one quart, a little less than one quart. That might actually be just right where we want it. Oh, and another thing. You always want to tilt it on its side where the oil fills at, not the carburetor. Don't tilt it on the carburetor side because all the oil from the uh, vent tube will travel down and through the carburetor and into the engine and you'll have a whole bunch of black smoke coming out. And it'll clog the cart. Well, it won't really clog it. It'll just be hard to start the next time. Yeah, it's a little overfilled. So we'll leave it at that. Ah, oh, shit. That's nice. All over everything. <sighs> Alright. Let's put this down on low idle. Turn this around. See if she'll start. Oh, yeah. <sighs> Gotta shut this down. Got a little bit of smoke there. That's from like tilting the engine over. That's normal. Should clear up here in a little bit. And we are perfect. That's good. A little bit over, but it's not going to hurt nothing. Not unless you're like way, way over. And then it'll start going into the combustion chamber and just burn it up.
That should be about it. It may have a little bit too much oil in it, but it'll burn it off until it's just at the right level. As long as you don't overfill it, like, you know, a large amount, uh, it'll be fine. So, uh, probably going to coat the uh, underside of this with some of that oil. I may or may not, but it's a good idea. That's why the mower lasts longer. I mean, this thing's about 10 years old now, I think. So uh, it may last another five or ten more years. So uh, there you go.